everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeanette for those of you who don't know me and I primarily do plant-based recipes here on this channel and sometimes you'll see my dad do Gary's Kitchen where he features some of his really unique plant-based uh, recipe ideas as well. Not too long ago I made a video on three easy plant-based meals that pretty much anybody could enjoy and it was meant to give you ideas or a template so to speak uh, to create a meal that you could certainly customize like if somebody isn't a hundred percent plant-based and they wanted to add meat or something to the dish they could certainly do that or enjoy them as is and today we're going to be doing three more easy plant-based dishes and today my goal is to attack some of the stuff that I have laying around in my pantry after stocking up for coronavirus. So I hope these give you some good ideas and help you use up a couple of your pantry items. So let's get started. All right, this first thing I'm gonna make is a sushi bowl. Now, if the thought of sushi just totally grosses you out, then you can either skip over this recipe or just make a few adjustments to it. For example, a lot of people don't like nori seaweed because of the fishy taste. So if that's the case, just leave it out and you can use whatever kind of vegetables and rice you like in this. Today I'm gonna to be using white rice because my dog was uh, sick recently with a little stomach bug and I was making him white rice. So I cooked a bunch extra for myself and that's what we're gonna use in this dish today. And then instead of fish, I'm gonna be using some baked tofu. And people have asked me on Instagram what kind I use, and that's the kind that I use. And it's already baked and seasoned with sesame ginger, so the flavor profile will work perfectly in this dish. All right, I have to get a few things ready to make my sushi bowl, so I just dice up some cucumber. And these are tri-colored carrots. I buy them in a bag, there's purple, yellow, and orange in them. Um, you can certainly just use regular carrots. If you're wondering how I do the julienne, I just use a julienne peeler and very carefully peel strips off of the carrots and then I cut them up a little bit so that they are more like bite-sized pieces like this. And in the package of tofu I showed you, there are two blocks of tofu. So I just take one and dice it into cubes like this and it is ready to go. All right, so to assemble my bowl, I use the 50-50 plate method on this, which is 50% starch and 50% vegetables, but you can do whatever ratios you like. Uh, that's just what I end up doing. But So I put my rice in there, and my rice is actually cold. I cooked it the day before, and then I add a little bit of seasoned rice vinegar. And you don't need to add this. It just, to me, adds a flavor a lot like a sushi roll, and I just pick it up at my local grocery store. And then I add in all of my other ingredients. So I'm gonna put in the tofu. Again, that's totally optional. And then my vegetables. And I realized that I forgot my nori. So what I'll normally do is take a sheet of nori, which is the seaweed that is used to wrap up sushi rolls, and tear it into little tiny pieces and then just mix that in. And then I add uh, Bragg's liquid aminos, which is a lot like soy sauce, or you could use soy sauce or skip the salty stuff altogether. Top it with a little bit of guacamole and some black and white sesame seeds, and it is done. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna make are my very easy instant mashed potatoes. Some of you have asked me how I make this, and it's incredibly easy. So I'm gonna show you how I do mine. And the pantry staple I'm using is just a bag of potato flakes. And I like these a lot because I use them obviously for my mashed potatoes, but also for thickening up chowders and making my cheese sauce recipe. And if you guys would like to know how my dad and I do our plant-based cheese sauces, then I will leave a link to that video in the description box down below. Now my favorite potato chip flavor of all time is sour cream and onion. So that's kind of how I like to flavor my mashed potatoes. Uh, you know, I try to get it as close as possible using plant-based ingredients. So here's how I do mine, but keep in mind, you can always do the spices however you want. I will admit I don't follow the directions on the package very well for this. So I just dump in a bunch of potato flakes and then to create my sour cream and onion type flavor, I'll use nutritional yeast just a little bit, some dried dill, dried chives, onion powder, and garlic salt. And then the package directions call for a little bit of cold milk, and sometimes I'll add in a little bit of plant-based milk, and sometimes I won't. So today I will, I'll use a little bit of almond milk, and then I've got some boiled water, and I'll just start adding 
that a little bit at a time and mixing until I get the consistency that I like. Again, this is not how the directions tell you how to make it, but I just kind of wing it. And I added a little too much liquid, but it was still tasty. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna make is a pizza sauce, and I am just following a recipe that I found online. So for this sauce, I'm going to post the link to the recipe in the description box down below. And this recipe is gonna use up a can of tomato sauce and a can of tomato paste out of my pantry, as well as some spices that I have on hand. This recipe is so simple, you literally just mix together a can of tomato sauce, a can of tomato paste, and then a bunch of spices. And I personally would not just use this on pizza, but I might thin it out a little bit and use it on pasta as well. It's that good. Here's a little bonus recipe for you guys. We're gonna use some of that delicious pizza sauce we just made. So I'm using some canned white beans, the juice of half a lemon. I'm gonna add a little bit of nutritional yeast and then a few dollops of the pizza sauce. Gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper for some spiciness, and then I'm gonna blend this up until it's nice and smooth. I call this my Tuscan bean dip, and it's full of flavor, and it's great not only as a dip, but I think it would make a great sandwich spread as well. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna make is a pizza, and I'm going to use pita bread for my pizza crust. I've used naan bread before, I've used the burrito sized tortillas. You can buy your own pizza crust, make your own pizza crust, get cauliflower crust, whatever you like. Um, but these make really good little personal sized pizzas, so let me show you how I do this. I just use one of my baking sheets lined with one of my silicone baking mats, and then I put my sauce on. Put whatever toppings you like on this. I like spinach, onions, mushrooms, and bell peppers. I bake mine at 400 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of the oven, but check your oven. You may need to adjust the time on yours, and I do mine for about 15 minutes. And while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna work on a couple paintings that I've started. This is kind of like a new hobby that I've picked up and I'm a total newbie, but I really enjoy it. You notice I didn't put any cheese on my pizza. Um, if you do cheese or vegan cheese, then obviously you put that on before you put it in the oven, but I just sprinkle mine with a little nutritional yeast and some salt and that gives it some great flavor. All right, so I hope you guys got some helpful tips on how to take some items from your pantry and throw together some really easy plant-based dishes. If you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel when you do. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.